decorations while we worked out the decorations. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to share about getting started with WordPress. Uh, first, a disclaimer. Uh, even though we were the organizing team for WordCamp uh, 2017, uh, WordCamp is a conference about uh, what else WordPress. <laughs> Uh, but I don't work for Automatic, and I'm also not um, a developer. My day job has nothing to do with WordPress or coding. So if you came hoping for a technical overview, I think you can go have dinner right now. <laughs> okay, so um, even if you aren't familiar with what WordPress is, or, don't, or haven't actually used it before to publish content on the internet, there's a good chance that you probably visited uh, a website that uh, runs on it and probably within just the past 24 hours even. And this is because uh, WordPress powers about 27% of all uh, sites on the internet. Uh, and this includes the US White House website. Yeah, a bit of trivia then. Okay. So um, as a product designer, I'm a product designer by the way, uh, I'm always interested in the story behind a product. Uh, who makes it? Uh, how is it made? And what's the process like? Uh, what is the vision and mission of the people who make it? Um, so, who is this guy? Uh, this is actually Matt. Uh, Matt is uh, the creator of WordPress and also the CEO of Automatic, uh, the company that owns WordPress. Okay, and uh, so something that also fascinates me quite a bit is how the company is run. Um, the automatic team works largely from uh, many places, so they're, they're uh, remote workers uh, co-located in about uh, 43 countries around the world. Uh, and so because of this, they rely entirely on a blogging tool, an internal blogging tool, to help uh, keep their communications between the teams. And uh, It's actually uh, based off, I think, uh, uh, a customized version of WordPress that they run into. So they managed to completely avoid email communicating with each other. Uh, so when you look at these stats, you might think that the company is very small, less than 600 people. And I, if you compare it to the other um, big players, so called, um, it is actually indeed very, very small. Um, Google, Facebook, Yahoo, I don't know if you would consider nowadays Yahoo as a big player anymore. Um, but uh, does anyone want to guess how much automatic is valued the company for? A any guesses? Um, okay, so it's actually valued at $1 billion. Uh, quite a surprising number to, to sell the option. Okay, so um, I've read that uh, Automatic's mission is to democratize publishing. So. Um, their vision is for ordinary people like you and me um, to be able to have access to the tools that um, normal um, official news publishers would use. Uh, so this just means that anyone here can download this software and um, publish using the exact same thing that the official news publishers use. Um, let's say the Wall Street Journal or for a more local example like the Straits Times. Although the Straits Times doesn't use WordPress, um, but uh, so from the viewpoint of automatic, this is um, relatively unique uh, in the history of the world. In the physical world, we don't have access to the same uh, printing press as the Straits Times, but in the digital world, we can have access to the same uh, kind of software that they use. Okay, so um, this these are just. Uh, a few examples of the pro other products that um, Automatic develops and offers uh, to complement the WordPress uh, software. Uh, WordPress is the main and by far the most popular uh, and probably most well-known product uh, that Automatic um, offers. But uh, yeah, so some of these things you, might, you may not know that they actually offer them. And uh, here's another list. Uh, these are all open source. Softwares. So, um, we'll ask the question now, what exactly is WordPress? Uh, and uh, maybe some of you have seen WordPress.com, WordPress.org and might be a little bit confused about the difference between the two of them. Okay, so, 
Uh, uh, maybe I should check um, if everyone's familiar with HTML, CSS, PHP. Anyone doesn't know what they mean? <laughs> okay, maybe a bit shy. Okay. So HTML is an acronym for a hypertext markup language. So basically, it formats your web page content. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. It helps to style your web page content. And PHP um, is a recursive acronym for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. So I tried to think of an easy way to explain this. Um, but as a non-developer, I'm just going to say it, 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 it does magic behind the scenes. Okay, so, and WordPress is based on PHP, so it's coded in PHP. Um, okay, so the two flavors of WordPress that I mentioned earlier. Um, there's a great comparison uh, table on the link there. Uh, basically, WordPress.com is a fully hosted version of WordPress that, that um, is maintained and updated by WordPress themselves, by Automatic themselves. So their tagline is, um, focus on your beautiful content and let us handle the rest. And uh, the version of WordPress found at WordPress.org, you have to host it yourself. And the tagline is, get your hands dirty and host your website yourself. Okay, so you would have to go to WordPress.org, download the files and um, buy space somewhere on a server and put your files there and post it. But uh, the upside is that it's free and open source, whereas if you um, want to do extra things with your WordPress.com site, you probably have to pay for it. So this is an example of what uh, the dashboard for a blog hosted on the .com looks like. And, uh, so I, I'm not sure if you've ever used like um, blogging tools like Blogger or Life Journal. Maybe it's too far back in the past for some of you. Um, you would understand the value in having a, a community, uh, sort of like an interconnected network of readers, like audience uh, of sites and blogs. So you're essentially, when you use WordPress.com, you're plugging into a ready uh, existing blogging ecosystem of. Uh, readers around the world. And, uh, and in uh, contrast, this is the dashboard for a self-hosted version of WordPress. Uh, I can show you live dashboard. Figure out how to do it. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll do that later. Okay, so the next question to ask is who should use WordPress? Uh, in my opinion, um, this question should be answered in tandem with another one, which is how WordPress can be used. So the answer is in some boring ways and in some really cool ways. Uh, I'll confess to having really limited experience with a fully hosted WordPress.com site. I've uh, actually started using WordPress when um, it was like version one point something or other, way back in the early 2000s. Uh, if you've ever had the pleasure of using Blogger, uh, after a certain point it got very uh, limiting creatively. There, there was only so much you could do in terms of styling your blog template. Uh, can I do this? No, it doesn't work. Can't do that. Uh, can't, get, can't put a password on my blog or, you know, um, just be able to fully customize it the way you want it. So uh, there were there were creative workarounds that people came up with, but uh, in the end I looked around and then I found uh, this WordPress that uh, really fit what I wanted to do, and so I started using it. Um, at the time, uh, WordPress.com didn't exist yet, so that WordPress.org was the only way for me to be able to do what I wanted to do. Uh, so I ended up. Uh, discovering and using and learning how to uh, buy a domain name and host it and manage my own site. So, in my opinion, if you really want to understand uh, the potential of using WordPress, we have to kind of uh, go through an overview of how it's evolved over the years. Uh, so, I'll just show you an example of the file structure that you find if you download WordPress off the WordPress.org site. 
the thing we want to look at here is the wp-content um, folder. This is where um, the things that uh, when you get started with uh, your own WordPress uh, installation, you will probably be playing around with most of the things in this uh, folder. So this is where the plugins and themes go. Um, it's where everyone makes their modifications and personalizes their uh, WordPress installation. Okay, so a um, quick overview of a plugin. A plugin is a piece of code that contains like a group of functions that can be added to your uh, WordPress site and uh, it's used to extend the functionality of your site uh, from the basic version that you get. Uh, and themes. So when you first uh, install WordPress, it runs on a default theme. Uh, both versions, .com and .org, uh, allow you to modify the default theme. Uh, you can also switch to a completely different theme. Uh, so, and, uh, and the default theme changes every year. They release a new version every year. So, um, basically this is to let them, uh, let Automatic showcase all the new features that they've come up with. So that's why they release a new theme every year, so that they can sort of demo um, new things that they come up with. So, we will start from the, almost the very beginning. Uh, this was the default theme. Uh, probably the most famous and most recognizable block team, uh, block layout design, having been used in millions of sites and ported to over like 30 completely different platforms. Um, if you've seen this somewhere else, it actually began uh, as a WordPress theme. It's called Kubrick and it's designed by a guy called Michael Hellman, uh, who is now the director of product design at Squarespace, which is a WordPress, I don't know, competitor, I guess. Uh, so, he made this theme for WordPress version 1.2 uh, in about, I think, uh, 2004, around there. And um, two years later, Automatic made it the default template with WordPress version 1.5. And uh, this theme was the default theme for like four years until 2010 when they started releasing the, a new default tem template every year. Uh, so. Huffington Post actually interviewed the designer of this template and uh, his role in the whole like world of blogging and uh, he also wrote a short and fascinating article on um, uh, how he designed this uh, template and um, uh, you can find it at his blog, binarybonsai.com uh, The link is up there uh, Yeah, and okay, meanwhile slightly less interesting uh, The back end of WordPress the dashboard looked like this in the beginning. So um, left side is the version 1.5 admin dashboard and then it got updated to version 2.1 uh, around 2007. And after this I stopped using WordPress for a really long time. So, uh, yeah. okay. uh, the year Kubrick was retired, 2010, uh, Automatic release WordPress version 3.0. Uh, I think it was a major big breakthrough for WordPress. Um, it really evolved from um, from just a blogging tool to a, like a fully fledged content management system. So, uh, if you're interested in more details and the full history and product evolution of WordPress, uh, I think WP Creative has done a post on this, and I'll provide links at the end. Uh, so after the default Kubrick theme was retired, uh, here's a, I've got thumbnails here of uh, the different uh, default themes that got released every year. So starting from the top left corner, uh, the default theme was called 2010. And in the middle, it's 2011. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're not very uh, original with their naming conventions. So uh, we'll go like this way and then end up with 2017. Uh, it's quite interesting from a de design perspective to see how the designs evolve. Uh, from the top left, it looks uh, very much like a block, like a typical block layout. And then as you go along the years, you see uh, with the evolution into a more like a content management system instead of just a blogging tool, the layouts and the default themes also change. 
So uh, in the middle right, for example, you see that it's more like a portfolio layout. And then uh, you come all the way to 2017, where you get like a very corporate type. Thing there. Um, yeah, so um, I think it's also evolved not only along with the product features, but also the universal trends at the time. So in 2010 was a time where a lot of people were blogging about their personal lives, uh, like photo blogging, video blogging, um, I don't know. And then as we all grew up and kind of uh, realized the dangers of posting personal things online, I guess uh, we started to um, post more like um, professional things like portfolios. So that's why you get portfolios there. and. Um, uh, like semi-journalistic content and media. Uh, so default themes, uh, while they look good, they're actually just the tip of the iceberg uh, when it comes to theming for WordPress. They're just showing you the most basic things you can do uh, with WordPress. But for an idea of how versatile WordPress really is, um, it's not by any means a comprehensive demo, but I've got just a few examples of what you can achieve uh, in terms of uh, theme design for WordPress. Okay. Um, this is a personal website of a Jap Japanese DJ and producer called Midori Aoyama. He also organizes parties um, for, a, oh, sorry. for a, a better idea of how the animation and, and um, design actually works, you should I should um, show you the link, however it doesn't really work here right now, so maybe I'll do that later. Uh, this is another example of, uh, well I would categorize this as like a web design portfolio thing. Uh, this company called Letters Incorporated, uh, they are a web design slash development company, um, so they help people to design websites and uh, this is their portfolio site. Uh, this is uh, another example of a creative design studio uh, portfolio site. And this is a... Uh, okay, Two Chimps is... Uh, they sell coffee subscriptions. So it's actually an e-commerce site. Um, e-commerce sites, uh, if you're running WordPress, you can use a plugin called WooCommerce. And uh, this is interesting. So I would categorize this as WordPress multi-user. Uh, multi-user is uh, it was a separate project uh, in the past before WordPress.com existed. Uh, it existed as a way to allow people to create a network of um, WordPress blogs. So one user creates like many different blogs, WordPress <coughs> blogs. Uh, they all run on the same installation of WordPress. Uh, it was merged into the main WordPress project from version 3.0 onwards, so in 2010. And uh, today, WordPress actually includes this uh, feature, the ability to create a network of sites by using the multi-site feature. So, actually, WordPress.com itself is actually a multi-site uh, network. Uh, so, it can be very similar to your own uh, personal uh, version of WordPress.com. Uh, end users of your network can create their own sites on demand, which is what this uh, site, 500 pixels, uh, is actually offering. Uh, you can create your blog on demand and uh, share plugins and themes. So, uh, if I was the owner of 500 pixels, for example, I would make a, I would install WordPress and a set of predefined plugins and themes and then anyone of you could go onto my site and create your own blog uh, and choose from this predefined set of plugins and themes that I'm offering. Uh, if you don't want to allow your end users to create blogs on demand, you can um, disable this feature and then you create the blog for them instead. Okay. Uh, these are the links. Uh, some things that I mentioned earlier. This is actually the end of part one. You can also check out the WordPress theme showcase at wordpress.org slash showcase.
uh, and uh, so links uh, on the history and evolution of WebFest and the article on Kubernetes for WebFest. Can we, can we take a break? A short break? Uh, I actually want to switch my screen to my browser. I'm going to show you the, I'll run through the themes that I mentioned earlier. This is the first theme I mentioned, the personal website of the Japanese DJ. So, see, you can do cool animations like this. Pretty much just a home page with stuff on it. Yeah. And then you've got a bottom navigation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they've actually, they, they are no longer in business, but their yeah, website still exists and it looks really cool. <laughs> These are just a, a few examples of the possibilities and potential of uh, using WordPress to design websites. And then there's the e-commerce one. So The WooCommerce plugin.
this was the example of the WordPress multi-user uh, network site. So these are all, all these blogs run off the same installation of WordPress or 500pixels.com uh, and depending on I think their subscription, how much they're paying, they get access to different plugins and themes on the site. mentioned that I stopped using WordPress regularly uh, after 2007. So I kind of kept up now and then with the updates uh, 1.6, version 2.1, 2.4, and then I completely lost track. And the next time I came back to WordPress, it was like version 4 or something, and I was completely lost. Uh, because there was this new thing called theme frameworks, and I had no idea what they were. Uh, child themes, parent themes, what are they? Uh, so, in the past, to customize a theme, all you had to do was just uh, go into the inbuilt theme editor and uh, just uh, edit like one CSS file and that was it. And then maybe update the index.php if you wanted to exclude things from like uh, post categories from the main page. But uh, the new themes were really, really complex for me. Uh, and uh, the number of files that were involved that suddenly exploded. They had their own folders, subfolders, and um, if you wanted to customize a theme uh, that somebody else had uh, published and created, uh, there would be so many things that you had to edit yourself. So it was kind of mind blown. Uh, so I thought I'll, I'll, I'll just Google for a theme and I'll get one that kind of looks like what I need and then I'll customize it from there. So. Uh, yeah, went on Google, right? So many options, like, like 1,800 themes to choose from, 10,500 themes to choose from, what? It's actually not that difficult. So we'll look first at WordPress.com. Uh, when you create a new WordPress.com site, uh, it's very handy to <coughs> categorize uh, the type of blog that you're creating, or I should say, type of site that you're creating into blog, website, or portfolio. And then depending on which one you want, uh, they show you a maximum of three theme examples. You can choose them, uh, one of them, or you can um, just uh, skip that and decide later. So if you skip that, you'll be going with the default theme. Okay. Uh, then, when you, uh, uh, this is still WordPress.com dashboard. Uh, when you decide later, you can come back to it. In, it's in a sidebar uh, under themes. Uh, this is called a theme showcase. Uh, so all these themes were created by other people. And you can uh, pick one and customize it, style it, uh, change the color, change the font. Uh, it's a... Uh, just a minor thing to note is that um, I don't really have that many themes here because this is actually the uh, WordCamp site, so it's kind of limited. Um, it's a little bit different from the actual WordPress.com site. Uh, but you should be able to do the same thing, browse through other people's themes and um, select the one that you want. And uh, the WordPress, uh, the self-hosted WordPress uh, dashboard looks kind of the same. 
I really see that. Uh, so under the sidebar, there's a tab called Appearance, and then that's where you would um, customize your uh, theme. Uh, the slight difference being uh, that uh, if you want, you can actually upload uh, a theme to your self-hosted uh, WordPress installation and then um, choose it from the, it will show up in the theme showcase and then you can select it from there. Uh, I think this is not possible if you're using uh, WordPress.com. Okay, so I'll explain, explain uh, very briefly uh, about child and parent themes as well as I can and maybe frameworks. Although I think uh, child parent themes and frameworks are more relevant if you are using the self-hosted uh, version of WordPress as you can't actually modify uh, functions uh, on a WordPress.com site. Okay, so this folder diagram. Uh, WordPress uh, WP-Content folder is where your plugins and themes go and uh, so a theme that someone has created is called a parent theme and uh, if you want to make modifications to it you should uh, well best practice is to make a copy of it and then uh, modify it as a child theme so parent theme and child theme would exist uh, in the same folder uh, parent theme uh, encompasses uh, three things the first is design the second is um, functionality and the third is templates so before the system of having child team was uh, implemented, when someone installed a parent team and then customized the files uh, to their own liking, uh, what happens is that when WordPress release, releases updates, uh, some of the changes might get overwritten or they, uh, might e the site might even break because it wouldn't uh, no longer it would no longer work properly. So child teams was um, kind of a system that was invented to. Uh, avoid these situations. So a child team would hook onto a parent team and it uses all its uh, template files and function files and uh, while being able to at the same time change uh, the way that the parent and child team look. Uh, okay. And theme frameworks, uh, so uh, WordPress has kind of been developed so extensively that uh, it's evolved into an entire ecosystem of, of people who develop themes and plugins like for a living. And uh, now, even beyond parent and child themes, there, there's this thing called framework. And uh, it's used mostly by theme, the people who uh, develop and design themes for a living by these developers uh, to help them speed up the process of creating new themes. So they are not really parent themes in a sense that they could function as parent themes but they're much more uh, comprehensive than a uh, regular parent theme. So it's kind of like, think of it like at a higher level, sort of like a template engine uh, of sorts. So it's like a set of conventions and functions uh, that will help developers speed up the process of uh, creating themes. Uh, Okay, why, why a normal person should know about this is because um, uh, so because frameworks are meant to help speed up uh, theme development, this means that a properly designed uh, framework, a well-designed framework, can uh, potentially give rise to hundreds of very good-looking uh, parent themes. Uh, that, so they don't only look good but they also function very well, uh, very reliably and so if you know which frameworks to search for, uh, it can help you narrow down uh, the deciding on uh, what themes to choose from. <coughs> so maybe instead of having 10,500 themes to look at, you might have just 500 to choose from. Uh, yeah, so Theme frameworks are generally released as uh, paid themes because uh, of the amount of work and effort that goes into creating them. Okay. Uh, now I 
can show you a, an example of a framework uh, on a live site. It's actually one of my domains. Okay, so the framework is called Enfold, and I, I have to thank Robert, who runs the WordPress Singapore meetups and uh, is also on the WordCamp team with me. Uh, he was the one who introduced me to this uh, framework. I need to switch. Actually, at version four right now, but uh, since I got this uh, quite a few years ago, and it's a paid team, so I'm actually running uh, version three point two, if I'm not wrong. So it might not be the exact same thing that you can see uh, on the the team demo site, uh, but I'll show you live how it actually works. So when you create a page, uh, normally. Uh, you will not have these options, but because I'm using this framework, uh, you get things like you can create uh, you can uh, create the layout of the page. So if I want a page to be split, uh, the content on the page to be split in half, then I would select this uh, option. If I want the content to be split in desserts, then I select this option. So it it actually helps speed up things when you're creating your website. Uh, and you can also have, um, uh, if you're doing an e-commerce site, you also have uh, options to just uh, plot like product, a grid of products, like a 3x3 three three, um, showcase of your products on one page, or another very interesting options. Um, I will actually show you the demo. Okay, so this is the uh, person who created the Enfo framework, and um, these are all, it's a version 4.0, so these are all up-to-date uh, demos of uh, the kind of websites you could create using this framework, from, ranging from a, like a corporate uh, website all the way to a photography portfolio. So it's really quite comprehensive. Seems to cover almost every conceivable kind of website that the person will need to create. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, yep. So these are the links. Uh, so Canvas and Genesis are two other. Uh, examples of frameworks that have been very well designed. They are actually probably the top two uh, most popular frameworks uh, being used by people who run WordPress sites. And, uh, if you want to learn more about frameworks and maybe try your hand, okay, you can check out the WordPress codex. Okay, um, now we'll talk about plugins. So I don't want to give you uh, the normal, ordinary, 
examples of plugins. I shall I, I picked a few um, I, I call them uh, trending buzzwords for 2017. So AI and machine learning. <laughs> I don't know if you're tired of hearing about them, but uh, yeah, they're all the rage right now. So why not? Here are some cool plugins uh, for WordPress that I found that uh, incorporate AI and machine learning. Uh, just a, I haven't tried any of them, so, but I think so. This is the first one. Word diff, related buzzwords, AI, SEO, linked data. Uh, okay, so what Lyft is a plugin that's supposed to help you create um, structured websites that are readable by humans and machines. Uh, it helps you organize posts and pages by adding uh, links, facts, media to your posts. Uh, so you can create and publish your own like, knowledge graph. Uh, it also publishes content uh, as linked open data following uh, linked data principles by Tim Bernard. So this is uh, an example of how it works. Uh, when you write a post, for example, there's a little sidebar there, and then it will suggest uh, to you what they call uh, entities in four different categories, what, who, where, and when. Uh, so you can accept the suggestions that the plugin suggests to you, or you can create new ones yourself. Uh, so what this does is it adds uh, additional information, uh, contextual information uh, to your post. Uh, so by doing that, it does two things. The first thing is uh, it helps search engines um, to understand your page, your post with um, semantic content optimization. Uh, theoretically, this should result in your post getting viewed by a more qualified audience. Uh, because the second thing, uh, with relevant uh, content recommendations that are customized around your audience using this plugin, uh, you should, uh, in theory, engage your readers more. Uh, so when readers are engaged, uh, they stay reading your content for a longer time. And that's a good thing. Okay, the second plugin, Watson Finds. Related buzzwords, AI, predictive analysis. So this plugin basically checks your content against IBM's Watson Finds uh, web service. Uh, so your content and page uh, uh, name, I think, are sent to the web service uh, at watsonfinds.com. And uh, if you want to see a demo of Watson Finds, you can. Uh, also go to watsonfinds.com slash demo to have a look at how it works. So, um, according to IBM, you don't have to create an account or anything on Watson Finds in order to use this plugin. And they also claim that uh, they uh, don't keep any of your personal data uh, or any other information. But I don't know if you would believe them. Uh, this is how it works. So, the plugin adds an icon to um, your text editor. So when you uh, type stuff in your text editor, uh, you can actually then analyze it with Watson Finds. You actually also can use Watson Finds plugin uh, from the sidebar to analyze content that you're not going to publish on your website. So for any other reason, you can copy, paste text in this box and have it analyzed. Uh, why would you do this? You might ask. I ask myself the same thing. <laughs> okay, so here's what happens. Every time you analyze your content, uh, let's say you want to, uh, you have an objective of writing a very, ang uh, a post that will make people feel very angry. Uh, it will show up uh, there in the bottom bar. Uh, so Watson Finds will help you analyze your post and then it will say your content contains a little too, uh, strong feeling of um, joy. But I want my post to 
uh, provoke feelings of anger. So then I would then modify my, go back and modify my content until Watson finds tells me that, okay, your post will provoke strong feelings of anger and then I've achieved my goal. And uh, so it even has a handy like timeline there at the side. So at any point of time, you can go back and review the changes you've made or uh, revert to a previous version if uh, you choose. Okay. Um, the third uh, plugin I've uh, chosen to show you is called Darwin. Um, this is uh, useful for e-commerce. Uh, it connects your site to a service by a Dutch company called Darwin Pricing. Um, how it works is uh, it's meant to be a dynamic, uh, geo-targeted uh, pricing optimization service. Uh, which the company describes as allocation optimization algorithms that serve the optimal pricing offers to maximize profits uh, based on machine learning tech and uh, artificial neural networks. Uh, so the plugin provides an integration between the product by this company called Darwin Pricing and uh, WooCommerce. So you, need, you kind of need two plugins even though WooCommerce is uh, an official plugin so it would be uh, installed, uh, it could be installed directly from the plugin uh, showcase. Uh, so you need the WooCommerce plugin and the Darwin plugin in order for this to work for you. Um, yeah. So uh, what happens is uh, it would add a targeted um, coupon box. Uh, geo-targeted coupon box to your Woo WooCommerce uh, site. And the last thing I want to share is called Live Chat 24 7. So it's trending because um, automated live support and chatbot. Uh, so as the name suggests, it's a plugin to help provide round-the-clock live support uh, and interaction on your WordPress site. So the company behind this plugin uh, provides chatbot solutions based on their own um, algorithms and uh, NLP, uh, natural language processing solutions. Uh, they claim to have worked with Uber, Uber Johnson & Johnson, uh, Coca-Cola. I don't know if you would believe them. Again, I haven't tried this, so uh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, I have another thing. Uh, so, oops, sorry. Okay, maybe before we go into the last part, um, I will share about WordCamp. Uh, so. WordCamp is a community organized uh, WordPress conference and it's happening next month on the 28th of October at uh, Suntech City Convention Center. Uh, we're we're going to have two tracks. So one is a developer track. So if you want to um, know more about uh, maybe how the core WordPress is being developed or if you want to know more about writing plugins uh, and uh, other things, then that's the track for you. If you are... Um, normal user like me, then we have a user track uh, where we have um, easier topics uh, to digest. Uh, and it's going to be different from last year. Last year we only had a conference day. This year we're having a, what we're calling contributor day on the second day. So on the 29th of October, this is going to be completely free. Uh, it won't be at Suntech, it will be a general assembly at Claymont. That's the nearest MRT is Orchard. Um, we will run um, workshops uh, and uh, we will also be having um, sessions where you can contribute back, so interact with um, people who are involved in the WordPress meetup group and maybe get to know more about how it's run, what we do during our meetups and how you can contribute back. Uh, you can get a ticket from the link there and uh, please follow us on social media. And, so, 
The last thing I have to show you is an actual live demo of a chatbot with it, uh, that's running on a WordPress backend. So I, I was kind of interested in uh, trying to create my own chatbot, but what do you do when you want to create a chatbot? And you have no background in computer science or programming, that's like me by the way. Uh, you look for a WordPress plugin that uh, will help you do that. So. I actually did uh, find a WordPress plugin uh, and made my own chatbot, which I call Pascal. Uh, it's not really. Um, this is the bot. So this is the very beginning when I first uh, started using it, and then I kind of slowly got it to actually say my name and post my own profile picture back to me. Yeah, it's really happy to be able to do this um, because uh, yeah, I don't know any programming at all. So if I can do it, so can you. I'll show you now the oh, get my mouse back. Um, the plugin is called uh, WPFB Bucket. It stands for WordPress Facebook Bucket. Uh, it's by a guy called Jeff Gold. Uh, he works for he's on the team uh, called Delicious Brains. Uh, so So you can get the source code from uh, github.com slash delicious brain slash WPFB bucket. Uh, and so basically after you download the file from GitHub, uh, you upload it onto your uh, plugins folder uh, and then activate the, the plugin. And then Okay, you need to do some setup. Um, so you have to create a Facebook page uh, for this, and also a Facebook app. And then you have to kind of like set it up with an access token. Once you've got that running, um, what happens is so the plugin uh, kind of helps uh, helps your bot to talk to your to to your WordPress um, installation. I don't really know how to explain this very well. But basically um, it helps pull content from your WordPress blog and the bot will then uh, spit it out to people who talk to the bot. So uh, all the backend code and functions and stuff are contained in this plugin. Uh, what you have to do is create a new, completely new plugin uh, that runs off this plugin, uh, which is what I did. 
And this is what my, it's pretty simple what my bot does. Uh, you could potentially do things with buttons. I, I don't know if uh, any of you have used bus uncle before. Yeah, you can, you could use uh, buttons in your, you could add them here. Um, there's a really good tutorial I follow. This is the tutorial I followed to create my to create Pascal. That brings you through. It's like a really good walkthrough of the whole process. It brings you through uh, connecting your bot with uh, your plugin, uh, creating the page, setting it up, and everything. Um, uh, and then you could do yeah. This is what you could do with buttons. So, um, I haven't gotten that far yet, but so in theory, you could write a post on your WordPress blog and have uh, the chatbot offer it as an option to people who interact with, with the blog. If you follow the walkthrough all the way to the end. It's even good at FAQ. Yeah, that's the end of my sharing today. Uh, if you've got any questions, I'll try to take them. Yeah, anyone have any questions or anything you need to want to know in particular? Uh, we have Zion here who is um, a two fledged uh, WordPress developer as well. If you get something a bit more technical, we can try and answer as well. Yeah. So Zion's on the WordCamp team as well. So if you've got any questions about WordPress. Anyone have any questions in particular? Uh, visual composer? Yeah. Uh, what, what about? Yeah, but because I had something on me to set up and it goes in and I basically a bit lost in my side. Uh, as in, he set it up as part of a framework or? No, he just tried to set it up. But I remember I was, I was not pleased to be actually. So I was trying to do something with it. So I tried to get some advice about what this is. Oh, he Oh, um, is there anything you know about visual content? Mm, a bit, uh, yeah. So, what, what issue are you having with it exactly? Uh, because when you set it up in the pages, there's a lot of blanking, and then it's like two color, one color, three color banner. Okay. Yeah, and but also, does it work very similarly to the demo of Enfold that I showed earlier? Is it similar? Like the WordPress. options you get? It's based on WordPress. Okay, so uh, like the two column, three column, they are meant to be blank. So after you set up the layout of your page, you then have to fill it with content. So if, I think if you click inside each of the sections, you'll be able to add other things like media or text. Or, um, I don't know. You try that. So actually Visual Composer, they, uh, they arrange things in blocks where you can, uh, instead of you needing to know HTML, CSS and all the technical stuff to write the web page code, right? you just drag and drop blocks and then you fill in the content. So, uh, and they actually lay out say, okay, I want this row to have actually three blocks, three sections. So uh, they'll have like, so-called like uh, sections, blank sections for you to fill in your content. So actually if you hover your mouse, around the area while you're in the Visual Composer, right? you actually see some options that will allow you to actually add some content inside. So when you create only all those blank pages, supposed to be blank, and then when I just don't create more pages and add that Yes, correct. Today. Yeah, you need to fill in content, yeah. Uh, probably I just uh, show some uh, examples from my own website, uh, the difference between WordPress.com and uh, WordPress.org. Uh, this
this is wordpress.com. Uh, this is the so-called free one. They have for uh, the they host it for you. Everything is done for you. Now this is wordpress.com. You see this download button here where you download the files and then you have to find your own domain, find your own hosting like GoDaddy, SiteGround, and then upload the files yourself. Do everything yourself. But you get full freedom. You get full customization. You can do anything you like. We also press.com, they host it for you, they are, they are, there are limitations. So, for example, okay, the, this is my blog, uh, Sun Tanker blog. Uh, it's running off uh, WordPress. Now, uh, usually when you get your own domain, you get web hosting, so probably, let's say, uh, 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 $10 per year for the domain name, let's say, uh, zion.com. And uh, you want to get a hosting, probably it's about $120 per year for about 5 gigabyte or more. So sometimes they'll come with this cPanel. And uh, the files that you downloaded from WordPress.org will actually go to File Manager and you will actually come to here. You create a folder here and this is where you upload all your stuff. Now this is the fully, customized, uh, fully customizable self-hosted one. Just now, uh, me was talking about WP content. This is where all your uploaded files, your images, your videos, your themes and plugins are, are over here. So for example, let's look at the themes here. 2015, 17, 16, bootstrap team, bootstrap team chart. Um, now, to go into my admin page, <laughs> I actually come to this uh, login page, and this is Google Authenticator. So this is an example of what a plugin can do. The normal WordPress login does not have this Google Authenticator. Uh, authenticator. It doesn't have a uh, 2FA, second uh, factor authentication. So let's uh, log in again. Let's look at the dashboard. So just now we look at the Teams folder. WP, uh, Bootstrap, 2015, 16, 17, Bootstrap team, which, is, which corresponds exactly to this. And if I were to go to uh, plugins, these are currently all the plugins that I have on my site. Let's look at the uh, Google Authenticator, Resize and Upload Plus. If I go to the Farm Manager, ah, here we are. Let's see. Uh. <laughs> and. Uh, Plugins, you see, uh, Google Authenticator, uh, Resize and Upload Plus. So all these are just files when you upload. This is the fully customizable one. <coughs> uh, what can you do with it? For example, let's say I need a slideshow to show some photos, and I don't know how to code my own. I can find a slideshow plugin for WordPress. There are millions out there. I download the file, and I upload to my own website, and I activate it. That's it. Uh, so how do I actually edit a post? I go to a post, come to here, and uh, I'm just typing whatever stuff I want. I can color it. So instead of me knowing how to how to instead of me trying to figure out how to type out all this. All I need to do is uh, just to type up things here, color it accordingly, or bow it, and then you appear. That's it. That. Uh, this is a site that I did for one of my clients. Um, so these words are customizable. So instead of the client needing to know how to code in all this HTML stuff, they just need to focus, okay, when I want to change, I just need to change these two words, and I can upload a new picture. So things like all these things. Um, so what WordPress does is, you can have all this technical stuff, but you give lay users, let's say your marketing team or someone who's not techy, a very nice, easy, user-friendly uh, interface for them to update the content. Hence the word CMS, which stands for Content Management System, just to manage the content. So things like that, uh, they don't need to know how all this works. They just need to show, no, okay. Uh, I have a user-friendly interface for me to update all the text and the pictures. And let's say if I want to add one more case study, uh, it's easy to do it. 
Um, now let's look at WordPress dot uh, com. This is a free one. Anyone can try out. You can go there WordPress dot com, log in, uh, create or sign up for a new account. I have no site here. So for example, let's say if I want to create a new site. Oh, I don't have any new sites now. So would you like to create one? Create site. Uh, okay, let's start with a blog. I say uh, creative uh, crew. So the yeah, help me check. Is that creative crew dot wordpress dot com? Uh, okay, is searching. Uh, okay, do uh, all these are taken. They allow you to actually. I think they help you to purchase domains. Like, this one, this one not very sure. Okay, so for example. Okay, creativecrew.wordpress.com is taken. So let me take creativecrew859.wordpress.com. Okay, so now, of course, I'll go for the free one. Okay. Uh, okay, it's almost ready. So let's build my site. Oh, okay. They actually put some dummy content for me right now. So why not I put a new post using the, say, uh, Hello to Payo Library. Hi there. And I'll just click publish. Okay, let's refresh this uh let's refresh this page. Okay, hello. Library. Hi there, and that's it. I have a blog that's there already. Now, um, WordPress started as a blogging platform. Bloggers, they just want to put content. They don't do matter with all this technical stuff. But now WordPress is moving on to more things. So this is our website. This is an artwork camp in Boston. Uh, so actually, WordPress now has this REST API where if you have a WordPress site, all these are automatically generated for you and provided for you. So what can this do? Now supposing, let's say I have, uh, I want to do an Android app or I want to do an iOS, uh, iPhone app. And uh, I want to show, okay, supposing, let's say I'm organizing a conference and uh, I want my the attendees to download this app where they can check the schedule, check the speakers, and uh, check what's going on. Now all this content, uh, am I going to uh, go the techie way and update a database and go uh, and make it very difficult that only the developer can do it. No, I want to say probably someone from marketing, from marketing to actually go to a WordPress website, use a user-friendly interface and type in say, oh, there's a new speaker, and then enter, and then you appear in the uh, in the app. Uh, I will show this example. Uh, normal base, normal base is actually a uh, app. Is in App Store, Android, iOS. This is not done by me. Um, version one was done in React JS. Version two was done using React Native. Uh, don't worry, these are just uh, mobile programming languages. But the fantastic thing is they are actually running off WordPress. So how do they add users? Uh, how do they add content? How do they add a new map? Let's say uh, there's no map for St. John's Island. They add a new map, they add new Google Places. How do they do, how they do, uh, they do that? So they have a marketing team who are actually going, non techy people, they go into WordPress. So similarly, they just come here. Oh, there's a new, uh, there's a new post. Okay, there's a new update or there's a new uh, place in town. Probably some new restaurant that you should go and visit while you are over here. So all this can be done by non techy people. So um, just let me also mention about e-commerce. Uh, how many of you have heard of uh, Shopify? Yeah, Shopify. So uh, some people, uh, like some of my friends, they like to set up e-commerce shop, start selling things, right? But they don't know all this techy stuff. So some of them go with Shopify. Now WordPress.com is a blogging platform. It's a CMS. Well, you can install a WooCommerce plugin to enable e-commerce. That means people can come to a WordPress site, you add your products using the user-friendly interface, and they can see it, they buy it, they pay with, let's say, PayPal or Stripe or Braintree. Now, what is the e-commerce uh, statistics? Shopify is here, around 
Whereas WooCommerce is about 12 percent, and there's another one over here. There's uh, this smaller, which I can't see. So it's about 20 percent. Uh, Magento is another popular uh, popular e-commerce solution. It's uh, trailing behind at uh, 11 percent. So just let me also mention WordPress is uh, built on PHP. PHP is a programming language for websites. It powers about 82 percent of all the websites in the world. So there's this huge community. So the great thing about WordPress is not because of fantastic technology, not because of uh, fantastic uh, developers, but more so because of the fantastic community. You want to play, you want a team, there's a whole ecosystem out there. And uh, it's been around for how I many 20 years? I can't remember. So, yeah. So that's a final shout out and uh, for WordCamp, it's happening in October 28 and 29 at uh, Suntech. Now, uh, developer conferences are usually very expensive, $1,000, $400, $1, at the iOS conference in October, that's about $400. This is $40, $40 because we are backed by WordPress Foundation. So uh, do come, there's a developer track for the techie people and there's the non-developer track for those uh, teachers, educators, for designers who want to know how to use WordPress to do their blogs, to do their business, to even to teach their classes, to teach students. So there are two tracks. So uh, do visit this site. And uh, yeah, if you have any more questions. Okay, so for example, let's see over here. Uh, where's my own site? Uh, okay. Uh, this is from WordPress.org. It means I download the files from WordPress.org and I uh, upload to my own server. So plugins, uh, let's say I need to add a new plugin. I want, let's say, uh, a slideshow. slideshow. <laughs> I can either find it on some website that a friend recommended me, download the files and upload to this folder. Folder. Once I upload to here, it will automatically appear under the list here. Or I can just go to add new. And I search for whatever I want. Say I want a slideshow. Okay, and uh, yeah, the many many slideshows so you have seen uh, every plugin will actually give you some options to customize so actually you have to try like you know like tikka tikka ma yeah. of course uh, you can find the by the rating system you can see oh this one says thousand plus uh, this one must be better than this one right so uh, let me try that one first so how about teams uh, let's say now is uh, mooncake festival is coming i want a mooncake team i want to show the moon and the bunny and the tree right and the ferry, right? So I can look for uh, appearance. I can go to team. Same thing. I can either scout to other websites, buy a team, or some a friend recommend me, or I can just find a team. Uh, but let me automate. Okay. Uh, mm, Chinese New Year. Okay. Christmas. Uh, Christmas, uh, Christmas will be here. Uh, okay, Christmas. So let's see. Uh, okay, only two. Uh, because it's seasonal. So usually what happens is uh, for those companies, let's say a retail shop, let's say uh, Spring Maternity, uh, they, they have their own customized uh, WordPress site. So let's say oh, Christmas is coming. So they ask the developer, okay, let me just add, change the header image. Okay, instead of uh, the Chinese New Year banner, right, I'll uh, replace the image. So how can I do that? For example, customize. Let's say I want to customize the current team. I can change the header image. Uh, okay, not very good here. Uh, let me see. Uh, Okay, 
So for example, okay, this WordPress.com, uh, so the interface is roughly similar. So let's say uh, right, right now using the WordPress.com, I want to add one more header image. Oh, okay, this is a preview. So what will happen if I save and publish? Dun, 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 and I refresh. Hey, I got my header image. So you can have say, uh, hey, designer, uh, very free, right? Can you help me write, uh, make a uh, Christmas banner image and then I can change. Then supposing, let's say, I don't like this white color. I want to change the colors to uh, orange. Same thing, you can preview first and color is changed. So no technical background required. So you just go there, click, click, done. So uh, this is the same for WordPress.com and as well as uh, WordPress.org. Yeah. For myself, uh, I created a team from scratch, so it was different. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, sure. Um, so, after Lynn mentioned uh, some of the things she liked in Bijoli, Yamato, and Chef Coffee and stuff, they mentioned uh, because of maybe they're using default theme themes or they're just things that you like or you know what was the idea behind those things that you uh, introduced us to? The idea behind the things that I introduced. Because um, you went to them from the default themes and so what the connection was. Oh, there, there isn't a connection with the default themes. Right. Um, they probably customized it. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. And I just put the um, convention of Involve, I thought it might have been, I think first it would be nice to go a bit deeper into how you use Involve and so on. But I can look into that. <laughs> I mean, that was probably the draw card for me today to see. Oh, right. Going, in, going into a bit deeper, I mean, I think a lot of us, on me personally, I spend a lot of time um, wasting a lot of time looking at different things where really I just need to go a bit deeper into it. Yes, very good question. Uh, because you mentioned Visual Composer just now. Now, with the normal WordPress, right, uh, your data, that means your content, right, the words that you write, like, hello to bio library, right, that will change. You notice that now I change the color, right, I change the banner image, right, but my words remain the same. Similarly, I can change the font. I change to, let's say, uh, uh, commit sense. And uh, the words will be the same, but the form will be written differently. Now, for Visual Composer, right, um, they actually, you drag and drop, drag and drop, it's very nice. Uh, and at the back, they will actually generate something like this for you. And it's all quite embedded. So, as a developer, uh, sorry, a bit tacky, uh, we like to separate data, logic, and presentation. These three things should be as separate as possible. You shouldn't, like, uh, mix them together, like, Rojak, uh. So when you want to extract our data, we want to move to another WordPress site, we want to move to another server, right? Uh, it's very difficult. So for our Visual Composer, they actually mix presentation with data. Uh, so sometimes, uh, let's say, one day you decide, ah, Visual Composer costs money, right? Uh, I want to stop using Visual Composer. Uh, you will find that you probably will have a hard time getting your data out. Whereas for me, I just using a normal team, which separates data and presentation, right? So all these all these things, it's easier for me to extract out. Uh, like, like even the Topayo library, things like that. Yeah. What is the reason to switch from a free to a paid? Oh, uh, full customization. I know question about WordPress.com now because actually it's been quite a few years since I uh, tried it. So the time WordPress.com, uh, I tried my church website. Uh, so the previous webmaster did it on WordPress.com. Uh, I wanted to make the font size bigger. I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> that, that was a deal breaker for me. La. Uh, let me show you an example. Um, for example, let's say Teams. Uh, yes. Over here, you can actually customize quite a lot. I think WordPress.com was a bit restrictive. 
I know question now that WordPress.com have uh, paid plans whether they give a bit more freedom as you pay more. Uh, but uh, the main thing is customization. Customization. Uh, back then, WordPress.com was a bit restrictive. Uh. Right now, I'm not quite sure because WordPress.com has big plans as well. Yeah. So, the reason I'm looking for is because I want to change the name of my blog. Oh. Uh, so basically, if I pay money, can I just move? Is it easy to move it then? Okay, uh, WordPress.com actually allows you to uh, tie a domain. So, for example, creativeproof.com. Uh, they can. You can do a site on WordPress.com and then link to creativecrew.com so that when people go to creativecrew.com they see a nice website but actually they don't know that it's WordPress that's powering it. So you can just go to your normal WordPress.com and mean you change and post everything right and you'll be reflected. Uh, that's why just now, remember when I first started the site on WordPress.com, they asked me to choose a name and they showed me what names are available and some of them have prices beside it. So actually I can buy and actually I can link link up. They actually give you a choice. But you, you can't do that without paying money. Uh, <laughs> if even, you, if even with this self-hosted, you need to buy the name anyway. So, so you change the name without paying money. Okay? Uh, if you own if the you name... If you the domain, that's a quick fix. Uh, if you own the name already, uh, I believe you can... Uh, over here. Dear readers, the library will be closing in 30 minutes. If you wish to borrow library materials, we advise you to do so now at our self-check machines. We thank you for your visit and hope okay, to see uh, you again soon. Okay, premium up. Premium is up. Yeah. 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 WordPress.com have a free plan, but they also have premium plans. <laughs> yes. WordPress.org WordPress is to download and you upload to your own server to manage your own, you host it yourself. So when you want to have your own server to upload yourself, first you need to buy your own domain name, then you need to look for a reliable web hosting company. So your own domain name is about, .com is about $10 per, per year to renew. Uh, we are hosting probably about uh, 10 dollars per month. Uh, some give you five gigabytes, some give you twenty gigabytes. So it's depending. Uh, yeah. So there's no freelance actually. So the simple one is dot com. Yes, dot com. So once you're more comfortable with it, and uh, you want to take a challenge, you want to have better design, or you want to find someone to pay someone to do it, uh, you can go on to WordPress dot org. If you want for something to take and you don't need a database, what is your account? It's a form of what? Um, sure. Sorry? Multi-user. Multi-user. Like, you create something that people will fill out from and select the class. Oh, no, no. That lets people create an entire set. So it's a new set. So it's like you're running your own website. Yeah, it can be done with multi-user. But uh, it is not a plugin, it's now a feature of WordPress. Yeah, uh, but you need to host it yourself. Collect data, is it? Then Google Forms is easier. Yeah, yeah you don't need WordPress. Uh, you can you can take like Google Forms and like your website and you just throw the whole Google Form inside. Yeah. You can do that. A Google Form. Ah, uh, and then after that it comes out in a spreadsheet for you. It will come out in a spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah. You, you go to Google uh, Sheet and then you create a form of the spreadsheet. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, you need your laptop. Maybe I'll, I'll just show you a question uh, now. Okay. You wanted to see more of info? Yeah, uh, yeah. it's fun. <laughs> Uh, 
the visual composer for M4. So I do if I do like photos. This is the visual composer for M4. Mm. Yeah. So we've got all the different layout options. I think that's what you were looking at. So if I don't put any content in these sections, it will be blank. Um, I just get four boxes. You might not be able to see it, so the boxes might be invisible. So what you get is a blank page. Uh, so you have to add content in. There's a whole bunch of things you can do here. Uh, so I put a button in here. Yes. Yeah. And then a catalog in here. Portfolio here. In here. I don't know how this is going to turn out. Contact. And then. Yeah, as you can tell, I have not really used my site very much. I kind of need to update it. So. This is kind of what happens. So I've got one, two, three, four columns here. Uh, I can go back and change it. So maybe I don't want I want it to be bigger. I click here to get it bigger. Um, publish it. The um, image looks better. Um, I can also choose uh, to have. Uh, different templates so beyond the visual composer you can set templates I kind of did this by um, the theme editor method because that's what I'm really used to it's what I used to do in the past so I fell back on that so. yeah it looks like that now So I think, yeah, we've kind of run out of time. Hope that helped. Yeah, if you guys have uh, questions on WordPress, there is actually a WordPress user group uh, in Singapore, so you can join it and post your questions on it. Right. Uh, I think some of you know about it, you can up with the meetup.com uh, page. Yeah, so if you look on Facebook, just look for WordPress user group Singapore, and then, uh, you should find it. If you find us, just search for Creative Crew Singapore, and you can find our uh, page on our group on um, Facebook as well, then just uh, join and you'll see when the next event is. It's always the second Tuesday of the month. Uh, that's thank uh, me for the presentation as well.